Where was the man during evolution? Where was the man with the thick, glorious black sideburns during evolution? Where was the man dressed in red and black during evolution? Where was the devil of the wrestling community during evolution? Where was DJ Storms during evolution? Well, after a five-hour shift at my job, I got home during the pre-show and I had some dinner. I had meatball soup, tater tots and fries, and a double turkey burger cheeseburger with barbecue sauce, and it was a delight. It was an absolute delight. Then I got on social media for about an hour and I just surfed the web to see what people were saying. I got an argument. I got into an argument here and there. Obviously, the low lives, the delusional idiots, and the trolls and the feminists are all coming out of their caves like I knew they would. Of course, and you know, I wouldn't be DJ Storms if I didn't get into an argument with a delusional troll here and there. Then after that, I worked and I finished a business statistics assignment, which is technically a midterm, so to speak, for my class, which is business statistics, obviously. By the way, it sucks. Business statistics absolutely sucks. And then after that, I took a shower and I went to bed. I didn't watch Evolution. Can you blame me? No. With the way that WWE has hyped up the show, with the way that they have built up the show, and with the way they have presented the show, and they've presented the women's division, and their lack of care, and their utter disgraceful actions towards the women's wrestlers, why would I care, and why would I watch it? I didn't give a fuck about Evolution, to be quite honest with you. I watched it a few hours before I had to go to my creative writing class at my college, and that was... About seven hours ago. I watched it in its entirety. I've dissected everything. I've analyzed everything. I took notes of certain things. And now here I am. And if you are watching this, and I'd like to give a shout out, and I don't really give shout outs anymore. Not to, um, not on just regular recorded videos, but I want to give a shout out to Brittany. Britt, if you're watching this, uh, thank you for joining me on this Monday afternoon. Hopefully you will see my point of view and where I'm coming from, uh, coming from, from, coming from as it relates to the women's division in the WWE and this entire pay-per-view as a whole. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rewind for WWE Evolution 2018. It took place... Last night at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, New York, on October 28, 2018. Now, was it a terrible pay-per-view? No, that is a complete over-exaggeration. It was not a terrible pay-per-view. Was it one of the best pay-per-views of the year that everyone is hyping it up to be? Fuck no. Fuck no. If you think this is one of the best pay-per-views of the year, then... You know, you're just, you're just buying into the hype that WWE is selling you. You're eating the garbage that WWE is feeding you. Y y you can't rate this show above a 5 out of 10, and that's being generous. You can't. And it, it, it was exactly what I said it was going to be. It was merely a three-match show. Without Io Shirai versus Tony Storm, Becky versus Charlotte, and Kyrie versus Shayna Baszler... This show would have been the worst pay-per-view of the year, but it was not the worst pay-per-view of the year. That title still belongs to Backlash. This video is going to be a long one, so get comfortable, pull up a drink, put your feet up on the coffee table, and listen real closely. Lend me your ear. Pay attention. Professor Storms is teaching. Now class is in session. We're going to go step by step, and I'm going to give you the honest and truthful wrestling analysis, the way it should be done in the wrestling community. And Britt, if you're watching, you know my style. You know how we do. 
You know how we do here on uh, the DJ Storm's on the DJ Storm show, aka the Lightning Flash update. Any show I'm on is the DJ Storm show. I'm like Kevin Owens. I I take shows and I make them my own. But in this case, I created this show. Supposedly, I was reading an article that it was Dakota Kai versus Rhea Ripley in a dark match on the pre-show where Rhea Ripley defended her NXT UK Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley won. Um, I didn't hear about how long it was or you know, you know um, if it was a good match or not. I don't know. But regardless of that, show kicked off with Trish Stratus and Lita versus Mickie James and Alicia Fox. Alexa Bliss was not able to compete because she uh, suffered a concussion at the hands of Ronda Rousey at a house show earlier. Although this kind of felt like a house show. It wasn't even sold out. There was there was uh, rumors that, uh, not, not rumors, there were, there were legitimate reports, not rumors, legitimate reports that the entire upper deck was tarped off. That's why the entire arena was dimmed down as it related to the lights. Trish Stratus and Lita versus Alicia Fox and Mickie James. Look, I'm a fan of Trish Stratus and I'm a fan of Lita. And I am. And it's good to see him back. It's good to see him back. They're doing good for their age. No disrespect to them. They are, they are timeless. They are timeless to a certain extent. But, and you know, I was expecting this from them. I was really expecting this from them. They were very sloppy. Some of the moves here were very sloppy. The timing was off. And that was expected from Trish Stratus and Lita since they haven't really stepped into a ring for a legitimate wrestling match. They were in a Royal Rumble, which really isn't a legitimate wrestling match with pinfalls and everything in between. Alicia Fox is just terrible. God, Alicia Fox. It, Alicia Fox is just terrible. Alicia Fox, she is... The longest running female talent in WWE right now, over a decade, and I think she, she's actually gotten worse over time. She's the opposite of a fine wine. Instead of getting better, she gets worse. You know, I don't, I don't know what uh, any of your fascinations are with Alicia Fox, but, you know, and I'm not speaking to anyone specifically, I'm just speaking in general. Mickie James was the smoothest competitor in this match. She carried all three competitors through the match like babies. Um, we had a reverse DDT by Lita. She makes the tag for Stratus near the end of the match. Stratus with a couple of snapmare takedowns. Hurricane Rana from the top. Close to count. Mickie James goes for the DDT. That jumping DDT. The Mickie DT. And Trish Stratus reverses it into Stratus Faction. And she got a legitimate four or five count on Mickey James. Alicia Fox, this was a clear-cut botch. Her timing was off by at least one and a half seconds. Alicia Fox did not make it in time, and the rest ha the ref had to stop the count. You know when Eva Marie was facing that, uh, that jobber on NXT a few years ago, and Eva Marie forgot to kick out? And if she didn't kick out, then the jobber would have won? This is the same incident. The ref had to stop the count. The ref had to stop or slow down the count. After that botch, then after that, you know, that messy looking spot, then we had a twist of fate to Alicia Fox. Double lead assault on Mickey and Alicia. And then we got the chick kick. And I like the way that Mickey sold the chick kick. How, you know, she uh she was knocked loopy, but she was out on her feet, and then she just slowly fell to the ground. Realistically, this was just an 11-minute uh, nostalgia act. This wasn't a good match. This wasn't a great match. It was an 11-minute nostalgia act. It was decent for what they put on, but ultimately, it was it's not something you're going to talk about in the future. It wasn't historic. It wasn't life-changing. It wasn't really an evolution. It was just a shrug of the shoulders nostalgia match. The 20 woman over the top rope battle royal. We had a lot of veterans like Maria and Alundra Blaze and Ivory. We had the newcomers, obviously. The Iconics were eliminated just like that. Then we had a stare down between the Legends and then the present day superstars, which I liked. There were a couple of innovative spots in this match. We had an eight woman suplex in which Nia Jax's side. I remember Nia Jax was on the side that delivered the suplex. I don't know who was on the side that received the suplex. It was kind of hard to keep track of everyone. But 
that was pretty innovative there. There was a brutal spot where, where uh, Michelle McCool, who actually looked in pretty good shape, Michelle McCool booted Ember Moon out of the air when Ember Moon went for the crossbody, which looked brutal. I'm not sure if it was the way Ember Moon sold it or the way uh, Michelle McCool delivered it, but it looked brutal nonetheless. Everyone was down, and then we had a dance break between Carmella and Ivory, which was entertaining to a certain extent. This match as a whole, it was not a good match. You, you, you are lying to yourself if you thought this was a good match. It was very sloppy, and the eliminations were very anticlimactic. If you take a look at them closely, the eliminations felt just so stale. I don't know why. The eliminations felt just so stale. And the fact that, you know, these great stars like Asuka and Ember, they were reduced to a battle royal. We had a couple of face-offs between Tamina and Nia Jax, and then we had a face-off at the end between Asuka and Ember Moon, and the crowd absolutely erupted in NXT chants. But ultimately, the entire Battle Royal as a whole, it was entertaining, and it did what it needed to do. It wasn't good, it wasn't great, it was entertaining for what it was. Now, there was a point where Ember Moon was going to eliminate Nia Jax. Zelina Vega tried to eliminate both women, she failed. Nia Jax military pressed Zelina Vega over the top rope onto Tamina. Ember Moon comes off the ropes... Hits Nia Jax with a few clotheslines, and then Nia Jax delivers a spine buster, and then just tosses Ember Moon over the top rope. Nia Jax wins the battle royal. Really? Might I remind you that wasn't Nia Jax just in the Raw Women's Championship picture months ago? She was in the Raw Women's Championship picture from March to July in that horrendous feud with Alexa Bliss. With that bully, that, that anti-bullying, be a star, total divas campaign. She had one of the worst women's matches of the year with Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania. And then at Backlash. And then forget about Extreme Rules. That was a seven minute, that was a seven minute nothing match. Seriously, Nia Jax over Ember Moon and Asuka? Think about this for a minute. Oh, but, but, but they're doing it because... They want to do Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax to... I don't give a fuck! I don't care how good the first match was. The fact of the matter is, is that we have seen this time and time again. She already had a Raw Women's Championship title reign. Seriously. Do you realize... Do you realize that Ember Moon has been on the main roster since April? Since April. And she has not received... One, not one fucking opportunity at the Raw Women's Championship. That is absolutely criminal. That is a wrestling sin. That is a wrestling sin. She only has one legitimate pinfall loss on her resume since she got to Monday Night Raw. Why? Why would you pass up the opportunity to do Ember Moon versus Ronda Rousey? Think about this for a minute. With how far Ronda Rousey has come and how far Ronda Rousey has progressed since only debuting in April and how good she's become and how great Ember Moon is. Ember Moon's the best women's performer on Monday Night Raw outside of Sasha Banks. Why wouldn't you want that match? That could be a match of the year candidate for the women. Look at what look at what Becky and Charlotte put on. Why wouldn't you want that with Ronda Rousey and Ember Moon? Think about that. Think about the match at Survivor Series. Ember Moon versus Ronda Rousey. You had the opportunity to make Ember Moon into a main event superstar. And even if you didn't go with Ember Moon, why didn't you give it to Asuka? Think about this. What good does Nia Jax winning the Battle Royal do? It doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good whatsoever. It's the same thing that we saw months ago. Why would you put Nia Jax back in the Raw Women's Championship title picture with Ronda Rousey when we didn't even want to see her there to begin with? This is why I get pissed off. This, this right here, this is why I get pissed off. Because WWE doesn't take a risk and they don't ever push the correct talent why hasn't Asuka even received 
one women's championship reign since she got up to the main roster. She was portrayed better on Raw than she since she's being portrayed on SmackDown. I'm hurting my fucking throat and giving myself a fucking headache because of this shit. If you want to see Nia Jax, if you're supporting this decision to have Nia Jax go over over Ember Moon or Asuka, then you don't deserve to even be watching women's wrestling. You have no say in women's wrestling whatsoever. Ember Moon was the correct winner here, and they didn't pull the trigger on it. Now what? All for what? J just another, another Ronda Rousey, Nia Jax match? I don't give a shit how good the first match was. I don't! Tony Storm versus Io Shirai, before I have an aneurysm. The fact that these two only went 10 minutes, this was the shortest match on the card. Again, just like Ember Moon not winning the Battle Royal, this was a wrestling sin. You cannot restrict those two to just 10 minutes. Now, granted, granted, it was it was one of the best matches on the card. It was it was better than it was better than 60% of the show. But ultimately, the fact that a battle royal got more time than this, and the fact that they have to make time and they don't want them to outshine Ronda Rousey and Nikki Bella, and that match was horrendous to begin with, and I'm going to talk about that. But why wouldn't you want those two? Those two, those two should not have gone less than 15 minutes. 15 minutes minimum for those two. Now, we had some very innovative spots. We had a huge acai moonsault to the outside, which looked beautiful, a thing of beauty, beautifully executed. Then we had Tony Storm, she was looking for Storm Zero on the apron. Io Shirai was trying to counter it. Io Shirai walked into a headbutt, and then a German suplex on the apron, which looked great. That was a great spot there. I love Tony Storm's German suplexes. That that German suplex looks like it, it could legitimately hurt your neck if you land on it the wrong way. Tony Storm hit Storm Zero. Io Shirai kicked out. Io Shirai went for the Asai Moonsault inside the ring. Tony Storm got the knees up, hit Storm Zero again, and she won the Mae Young Classic. Should have gone at least 15 minutes. It was an absolute sin that they didn't. But I'm happy Tony won she definitely deserves it. She almost has a Daniel Bryan like aspect to herself if you didn't if you didn't really pick up on that. She's a very good she's a very good underdog. I knew I had a feeling Tony Storm was going to win. Look, Io Shirai's already signed, so we know Io Shirai's going to be a big deal. Tony Storm, I can't wait to see what she does in NXT and in NXT UK. Tony Storm, she was the right winner here because she came into the semifinals and she lost to Kyrie Sane last year. This year was her time to win. Io Shirai, I didn't think they were going to give it to Io Shirai. I didn't think they were going to give it to Io Shirai because it would be way too predictable when you have another Japanese superstar win the tournament. Now, that's not racism. That's just me. That's just me trying to piece, piece the puzzle together. But I'm glad Tony won. She definitely deserves it. This, this was a great match for what it was. Should have gone 15 minutes. The Riot Squad versus Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalia. Come on. What do you want me to say? Look, it, it, it's not that it's not it's not even that it was a bad match. There were some innovative spots in the match. There were some innovative innovative spots. Ruby Riot doing a senton onto Bailey with Sasha underneath. There was a spot where they did a Doomsday device, did Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan, almost a modified Doomsday device. I like that. Frog splash, elbow drop combination. It, it wasn't necessarily a bad match, but we've seen this match 20 billion different times over the course of the last year, even at the end of 2017. We've seen this match time after time after time after time after time again. What is this match even going to do? It was nothing but a filler match. The fact that Sasha Banks and Bailey were resorted to a six-woman tag when Nikki Bella 
and Nia Jax were presented huge opportunities. It... Oh, God. I'm, like, getting all out of sorts here. I'm, like, getting all out of sorts here because of these incidents. See, this is what this is what WWE does to me. This just shows how little care they have for the real women's wrestlers, and they want to push the reality television stars, and they want to try and push this this total divas bullshit for a dying reality television show. And I think I'm getting all this. I already got all this out already. I'm just, I, I'm sounding like a broken record. I already got this out already. I'm just sounding like a broken re a broken record at this rate. And when I say I'm getting heated, I really am getting heated. I feel like my blood's gonna boil. Now we see this match for the umpteenth time on a meaningless pay-per-view in which WWE just barely put any effort into. Didn't even put effort into it. it wasn't a bad match. It had some innovative spots. And thank you, you know, Sasha Banks. You realize that she has only been involved in five pay-per-views this year, and this was her first pay-per-view win. You realize how sad that is? You realize how sad that is? That Sasha Banks has been has been put in a tag team with Bailey that has ultimately done nothing but cause cause a lot of people to recoil and cringe. The fact that she's only had one pay-per-view win this year so far. At Evolution, and the fact that she hasn't been in the Raw Women's Championship picture in over a year. You expect me to sit there and, and you know, be okay with that? You think that's okay? It re that really does piss me off. This This match had nothing, had nothing historic about it. It had... Nothing groundbreaking or breathtaking. It had nothing like that. Io Shirai and Tony Storm, though only 10 minutes, that had more history to it than this match. Because that was for the Mae Young Classic Finals. That actually had innovative spots. That actually had a great story being told with the whole tournament that has been taking place over the last two months, and now it is its culmination. Though it only went ten minutes, it had a hell of a lot more history behind it. Same thing with the Battle Royal. Battle Royal had nothing behind it. Battle Royal was merely there to put the remaining talent that didn't have other matches on the card into a throwaway match. Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalya win. That's that. Was it was it horrendous? No, it wasn't horrendous. But was it great? Was it earth shattering? Was it groundbreaking? No. You need to open your eyes and you need to realize that not everything is going to be groundbreaking or earth shattering just because WWE says it is. WWE is trying to use you. They are putting you on strings like puppets. This is what I say all the time. WWE is manipulating you. You are a brain you are a brain dead zombie if you are actually buying into this. Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. This match was absolutely fantastic. This match and the Mae Young Classic match, these two really started to bring the show up. Just just a little bit. Minorly bring the show up. But we had a fantastic match. It only went 12 minutes. You know, why is it that why is it that the two NXT matches on the show were two of the shortest matches on the show? Think about that for a minute. You know, there was there was reports going around that Vince McMahon was producing this show. Did Vince McMahon really shaft NXT just so they wouldn't outshine? The main roster. Vince McMahon was producing the show. And the two NXT matches are the two, well, two of, two of, not the two shortest, two of the shortest matches. What does that tell you about how Vince thinks of NXT? I'm trying to calm down a little bit because, you know, I hurt, I hurt my fucking throat on that Nia Jax rant. This match was fantastic. We had a lot of 
hard-hitting spots. Shayna Baszler throwing Kyrie Sane into the steel steps. I love Kyrie Sane's spinning back fist, by the way. That looks beautiful. I, lo I love it's like a crack of a whip whenever Kyrie Sane does it. And the impact that it has, if sold properly, it looks great. I also love that rolling blockbuster that Kyrie Sane does. Kyrie Sane, you know, Kyrie Sane, you know, she, she, she's just so lovable. She's so adorable. I don't know if I've ever said this, but, you know, Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane really is, she holds a special place in my heart. I'm not afraid to admit that. Kyrie Sane is adorable. She's absolutely adorable. I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever met a person that when I show them Kyrie Sane and they're a wrestling fan, they can't love Kyrie Sane. Shayna Baszler, I love, I love the badass role that she portrays. Now, towards the end of the match, we had a huge crossbody to the outside. It actually looked better than at NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four, and I was at NXT Takeover Brooklyn Four. But we had the crossbody, and then Kyrie Sane tossed Shayna Baszler into the crowd, and coincidentally. Two of the people that Shayna got tossed into were Jessamine Duke and Marina Shafir. And Marina Shafir got involved. The ref didn't see. Kyrie took out Marina with spinning back fist. Kyrie went for the went for the Alabama slam. She connected it. She went for the insane elbow. Marina Shafir came up on the apron. Marina Shafir got kicked down by Kyrie Sane. Kyrie got caught in a coquina clutch, but reversed it in the same way that she did at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4. And then Kyrie almost had Shayna Baszler. She almost had Shayna Baszler. But Shayna kicked out. Kyrie then... What did she do? I, th I think she, she went for a roll-up. Kyrie went for a roll-up. Shayna Baszler kicked out. And Kyrie got kicked forward through the ropes right into a kick by Jessamine Duke. And then Shayna Baszler locked in the coquina clutch and Kyrie Sane passed out by a technical submission. She passed out. She did not tap out. And Shayna Baszler, she makes history. Ironically, Shayna Baszler made the most history out of anyone. Shayna Baszler made the most history out of anyone. She became the very first ever two-time NXT Women's Champion. Now, I don't really agree with the decision to take the title off of Kyrie just to put it back on her at NXT TakeOver War Games. I get why Triple H did it, because I, I think this is just another Samoa Joe-Shinsuke Nakamura incident, when Shinsuke Nakamura lost the title to Samoa Joe, and then Shinsuke Nakamura won the title back from Samoa Joe two weeks later. So I think that this is going to be something similar. I think this is going to be something similar. Now, I'm wondering where Bianca Belair is going to fit into this. And I, I don't really think that it's right for Shayna Baszler to be treated as a transitional champion. But since it's NXT, I'm going to give this an exception. Mainly because of the fact that Triple H, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing, though I may not agree with it. He does know what he's doing, and the storylines, and the matches, and the overall feel of his product down in NXT is much better than the main roster. So, I guess I'll let this slide. I'll let this slide. I let it slide once in a while. I let the short title reigns slide every once in a while. I don't like short title reigns, but in certain types of cases where they just want to do it once in a while here and there, I don't really have a problem with it. This is just a this is just a once in a while thing. It it's, it doesn't happen all the time. On the main roster it happens all the time. Short title reigns, transitional champions here and there. No champion really has a title reign that lasts over 100 days. It, it's almost a rarity nowadays. Shinsuke Nakamura I think just surpassed 100 days as United States champion, but that's that's um that's another topic for another video. But this was a fantastic match. This lived up to the term history. This lived up to the term evolution because of how far both women have come. And I like that they are introducing the four horsewomen into it. Could possibly lead, could possibly lead to a four horsewomen versus four horsewomen four-on-four match at WrestleMania. I won't mind that.
Or even at Survivor Series. Even at Survivor Series, I wouldn't mind that. So, after this, Shayna Baszler celebrated. I think she took a picture backstage with Maria Shafir and Jessamyn Duke, and that was that. Then, we had the last woman standing match between Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. And I don't care what anyone says, this was the best women's match in all of WWE all year. Charlotte and Becky did an absolutely phenomenal job at this match. They poured their heart and soul into this match so much, and I have nothing but praise for them. Now, obviously, there was a few mistakes here and there, a few botches here and there. Obviously, every women's match is going to have it, but I think they played off some of the abstract spots very well. Charlotte did a moonsault, and she landed on Becky, but the table did not break. She repeated the spot, and this time she did a swanton bomb. I would like if Charlotte added the swanton bomb to her arsenal. I wouldn't mind it. She actually does a pretty decent swanton bomb. You know, maybe take a few lessons from Jeff Hardy on how to really do it, and you should be fine. You should be fine. I wouldn't mind Charlotte adding the swanton bomb. We had a spot where Becky and Charlotte were just going back and forth, and they were just throwing each other on piles and piles of chairs that looked brutal. Um, Becky actually slammed Charlotte on a ladder. Charlotte then used the ladder against Becky later on and locked in the figure eight with the ladder. We had a spot where Becky and Charlotte were brawling in the crowd and the crowd was going crazy. They were just, you know, trading blows back and forth. We had probably my favorite spot of the night. We had my favorite spot of the night where where Becky set up Charlotte on the table and Becky climbed up the ladder and did a huge leg drop to Charlotte Flair through the announce table and then she channeled her inner Tommaso Ciampa. Remember what Tommaso Ciampa did at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4 burying Johnny Gargano? She started to bury Charlotte underneath chairs and you know all the other rubble around her. But Charlotte rose from the ashes. That's what Michael Cole said. Charlotte rose up. And Becky's like, her eyes were lit up. She was just shocked. Charlotte just standing, standing there with the scrunched up face as if she was about ready to murder Becky Lynch. She takes a kendo stick, starts whacking Becky Lynch. And it looked brutal. It looked brutal. I don't know what is it. I don't know what is it about kendo stick shots. But whenever someone takes a kendo stick and just starts whacking you, 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 you can feel it. I would not, you know, if there's any, if there's any weapon spot that I would not want to take in the WWE, I would not want to take a kendo stick spot. I would much rather go through a table than take a kendo stick spot. Because if you go through a table, at least it's, you know, it has some give. It has some give and you know, you hit the mat afterwards. But a kendo stick spot, oh my god, you're just you're just getting whacked, you get welts. It's like a crack of a whip. But there was a spot where Charlotte near the end of the match, she was going for another moonsault to the outside and Becky was on another table. Becky got up and power bombed Charlotte from the top turnbuckle, not the top turnbuckle, the middle turnbuckle, through, through the table, Charlotte crashed and burned, she went through the table, and then she landed on the concrete outside, Charlotte could not get up to her feet, Becky Lynch retains the SmackDown Women's Championship to end this feud, I would love to see Becky Lynch versus Naomi, or Becky Lynch versus Asuka after this, I think that that is the next step, Becky Lynch has done absolutely great, Becky Lynch has been doing some of the best work of her career. It's time for Charlotte to take time for Charlotte to take a break from the main event scene. Have Charlotte put over some talent. Have Charlotte put over Naomi. Have Charlotte put over Asuka. Have Charlotte put over the Iconics. It's time for Charlotte to take a break. But phenomenal last woman standing match. One of the best, if not the best, raw, not raw, women's match in WWE all year. Good stuff right there. It really is good stuff. Now, after that, it just proves that that match should have main evented.
But after that, you could have basically just skipped the show. You could have skipped the rest of the show because the rest of the show was nothing but a 15-minute, sloppy, uncoordinated, just overall horrendous match. Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella for the Raw Women's Championship. And it was exactly what I said it was going to be. The first couple of minutes of this match was merely Ronda Rousey throwing Nikki Bella around and Nikki Bella getting frustrated. And then she had to use Brie. She had to use Brie as her as her um insurance. And Brie tossed Ronda into the post. Brie took some shots at Ronda. And Nikki Bella, she, you know, she has to be scrappy. Nikki Bella has to be scrappy because she is just so stiff and uncoordinated. I don't know what the fuck you you guys are watching, but this match was absolutely horrendous. It is completely unbelievable. You cannot make, nobody could make a Fugazi reality star like Ronda Rousey look legit. Or, or excuse me, a Fugazi reality star like Nikki Bella look legit against a woman who is a former UFC fighter. This should have been a 30 second squash match it should have been judo throw into the armbar, and that would have been it. I apologize about my dog. There really is no controlling her. Should have been a 30-second squash match because there is no way you could have made Nikki Bella look legit against Ronda Rousey. You're telling me, you're telling me that Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Triple H, 14-time world champion, one of the best in the game, punched him, and threw his ass around like a rag doll, but she couldn't handle the Bella Twins? She couldn't handle the Bella Twins. So the Bella Twins are superior to Triple H? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? I told you, I told you this was going to be a shit match, and it was. The only reason why the crowd even reacted to it is because there were a lot of delusional, idiotic, moronic Bella Army, Bella Army bitches and Bella Army, Bella Army fans and all these total divas, total divas butt puppets in the crowd. That's the only reason why the crowd even reacted, because of the portion of the crowd being total diva butt puppets. Absolutely absolutely unbelievable. This match was absolutely terrible. If you think otherwise, you need medical attention. You need brain surgery because you're, as Scott Steiner once said, you know, your X and Y chromosome ain't connected. You are out of your mind if you think that this match was good. Nikki Bella, so stiff. Her, her, her shots her shots looked so forced. It, it, almost, it looked so fake. And I get wrestling is fake, but come on, at least make them look believable. The fact that Nikki Bella has Ronda Rousey in a submission hold? A UFC fighter. She has a UFC fighter in a submission hold. You expect me to believe that? And then, you know, Ronda Rousey, she went for a crossbody. Nikki moved out of the way. And then Brie started jumping up and down like an idiot. As if she just won Mega Millions. I mean, seriously. Bree's already... Bree, you already look like an idiot in the ring when you try and wrestle and you botch at every single match. Now you're looking like an idiot outside the ring, jumping up and down. Seriously. What, what, what is wrong with that woman? What is wrong with Brie Bella? She looks like she's an idiot in the ring... She's botching every single match, and she's an idiot on the outside. Unreal. I don't care who I piss off, because at the end of the day, you know I'm right. This match was absolutely terrible. Ronda Rousey... Ronda Rousey was taken to the limit by a Fugazi reality star. A Kim Kardashian wannabe. There is no way that this match could have even been an like e e even one percent believable unless it was a squash. For any of you, and I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this till the day I die. The Bella fan base, you know, I said it about the Roman fan base, but I'm gonna give uh, the Roman fan base of Roman Reigns a break. I am not going to trash him at all. The Bella fan base is the dumbest 
dumbest, the dumbest, the, the most delusional, the most delusional, idiotic, moronic, weak-minded, gullible fan base. They are the dumbest life forms on the face of the planet, buying into this bullshit that WWE's feeding them. This was all part of the plan to push a dying reality show, when in reality, in reality, no pun intended, they should just let it die. Because Total Divas and Nikki Bella and the Bella Twins and all that other bullshit is absolutely tarnishing the women's division. Ronda Rousey wins with an arm bar. She took out both of the Bellas. The fact that Nikki got any offense on Ronda Rousey is an absolute sin. You need to use your head for a minute. Look at her in-ring style, Nikki Bella. Look at her in-ring style. Ronda Rousey had to step into Nikki Bella's enziguri because Nikki Bella would have pulled up short. Same, th same thing happened with Ruby Riot. I don't know what you guys are watching, but that match was absolutely horrendous. You know, I actually saw X-Pac actually tweet that, you know, they're putting on a hell of a match. I actually got that guy's autograph and I met him, he's a great guy, great guy, such a nice guy in person, and, you know, he, 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 you know, I, I don't wish any bad upon him, but, Pac, Sean, Sean Waltman, can I call you Sean, you're an idiot if you think that that match was anywhere near good, I, I don't care if he sees this, I, I don't care, that match was absolutely terrible, one of the worst women's matches of the year, Right next to, right next to, Asuka and Carmella and Alexa versus Rousey at Hell in a Cell specifically, not SummerSlam. And, um, and Asuka versus Carmella at Extreme Rules specifically, not Money in the Bank. Oh my god, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all out of breath, my throat's killing me, but ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of The Rewind. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Do not forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the DJ Storms. Do not forget to leave a thumbs up. I'm trying to move up in the world. If you're going to leave a thumbs down, fuck you. Be sure to leave a comment. Tell me what you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber of mine. And be sure to drop a huge acai moon salt on that notifications bell so you will be notified whenever I grace YouTube with my presence. Because the best time to be on YouTube is when I grace it with my presence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Storms. I am going to get out of here before I give myself an aneurysm. And I am going to relax. And I'm going to attempt to finish up some college work. And I may or may not watch Monday Night Raw. I still haven't decided yet. But nevertheless, you guys have a great day. And hopefully I will see you either on Friday or Saturday for the Lightning Flash update. If not a Lightning Flash update, then a storm stream will be coming. The final storm stream before I put it in hiatus. I am in search for a guest. If you guys want to be a guest on the storm stream, I'd be more than willing to have you. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, this has been The Rewind. I'm DJ Storms. You have a great weekend.